games. Perfect. Okay. session. So I only have 10 minutes, so let me just start. Uh, I'm Tom Silverman, uh, and uh, I'm going to talk about this uh, modeling language we have developed over the last 15 years for, for making SQL models of the all. And uh, I have a research session of 30 people, combining people who look at ethnographic methods for understanding work practices and then formal methods uh, together. Uh, and I've also been doing the kind of quite a lot of number of projects uh, joining computer science and law. But the main motivation of this is, of course, that we have a lot of deals and services that embed law. Uh, and we have seen several examples that have this voice up already. And to have, uh, to meet these uh, sustainability uh, uh, goals, we also need to have uh, uh, a fair uh, uh, practice uh, when we exercise law. So we really need to know that, that these systems embed law uh, in, in the correct way. And the problem is, of course, that if you use code or these fancy uh, process diagrams or decision tables, there's still a translation gap uh, that makes it pretty uh, difficult to maintain and understand these uh, models of the law that are embedded. And in Denmark, we actually have the letters being sent out to a citizen saying, okay, now your pension has changed, or now you have got this rejection. It's all automatically calculated based on models of the law in some computer system. And you have no idea as a citizen to, to no. kind of challenge this uh, decision. I mean, you can do it, but you only have a few weeks, uh, and if you don't complain, well, your pension has changed. Uh, and we have a lot of directives also coming now from the European Union, so the problem will, will just increase, being more and more important. So uh, the Danish government has, for, for many years, uh, uh, kind of uh, bragged and said, well, we, are, we have this initiative for the cessation ready law. But in fact, what they're really doing is to try to simplify law so it's easier to implement with traditional methods. And that's never going to work, because people, I mean, the politicians keep up making laws. Uh, they're not going to make simpler laws. Uh, I noticed there's also a European uh, office actually looking at, at this uh, 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 decent law. Uh, and then there was an interesting report coming out from New Zealand that also looked at the problems about the legislation as code. Um, but what did we do? Well, we developed a, a system jointly with lawyers, municipalities, computer scientists, uh, and critical computer scientists, allowing a, a people to, to take the, the text from the law in, in a system highlight what is the role, what is an activity, what is a, a rule, uh, and then you have these dual views of the same uh, model uh, where you have a graphical uh, uh, graph of the rules. And then you can go on and, uh, oops, yeah. You can put this in, into the uh, tool, you can get the models, and then you have a process engine so you can simulate these uh, models. And you can expose them as uh, dynamic guidelines that people can use as an end user. Uh, you can also embed them in a case management system, so you get checklists telling you what to do and what are the deadlines. And finally, you can actually do process mining on what people can actually do, and then you can get uh, a picture of what are the rules people actually follow. Uh, and then you can compare this to your original regulation. We haven't done so much formal verification yet. Uh, but since there's a formal mod behind, and if you stay within the core subset, it's final state, uh, that's actually you can uh, import it into the, the, the formula and, and use the model checkers, uh, or you can develop your own model checkers so if you stay in the final state. If you do not stay in the final state uh, and move into the Turing complete uh, uh, fragment, then you can still do some static analysis. Uh, and we have done that in research papers, but the company has not. Uh, implemented that. Uh, there has no, not been a demand for that. So it, it came from a, a formal model called Event Structures, developed many years ago in the 80s. You, we made this uh, model that generalizes event structures, so you can do the activities or the events several times. And then we made industrial tools. And it's actually embedded now in a, in a 
workflows, big workflow system uh, sold by NEC Corporation uh, in many uh, countries uh, around the world. So, formally, it's a graph. Uh, in the core model, there are five different relations. Uh, and, uh, and then we have a lot of extensions. And you can locally decide whether an activity is uh, uh, enabled or not. Uh, I will show an example. Here is the one from the Danish Conservation Act of Social Services. It's only one paragraph, it's only two sections in the paragraph. Uh, but this is, you can actually click the link and, and see it uh, online. We have actions, we have roles, we have rules. And there is also, we also made some suggests, which is used in NLP to try to suggest where we have actions, roles, and rules. It's not 100% and it will never be, but it can help you uh, start the work. Then the graph looks like this, and you can click the, the link and you get into the simulation tool. And here you can see I have started the simulation. There is only one enabled activity. You see the notification uh, of the child. Uh, because you have these condition constraints uh, to the other activities, they're making them not enabled yet. And if you then execute receive notification, some more activities became enabled, and you also have an obligation acknowledge receipt with a, with a deadline. Uh, because you can put deadlines on these uh, obligations that are dynamically great. And then you can go on, you can actually set this receipt. You can execute this activity, which is a data activity. So we actually provide some data when you execute it, uh, which is right now just yes and no. Uh, and that will then be used as a guard constraint to either dynamically include or exclude this. So you have this dynamic exclusion and inclusion of, of uh, activities. Here's an example of this library uh, application from, from the morning session where we dynamically create an application of returning a book or not returned. Uh, so, so you can model these uh, properties. So that was more lunch. So we have extensions. You have seen extensions to the core model with time, uh, which is essentially extending with delays and deadlines. We have extensions with data, computation, and, and conditional relations. And also sub-processes, so we can do hierarchical modeling, uh, and also dynamic spawning new uh, uh, sub-rules uh, you have to, to, to uh, fulfill. Yeah. And there's a lot of papers, it's 15 years of work uh, that one can look into. Ongoing work, we look at modularity, uh, uh, more modularity combining different graphs uh, and having links, because you can see in the regulation that you have some paragraphs referring to other paragraphs. Of course, we would like to model that in different graphs and then uh, link them to each other. We have done it in theory, but the company has not yet implemented it. Uh, so there's a, a paper at, at FASE some years ago. We work a lot on this process mining, which is really looking at log files from existing cases. And then we have now a tool that can mine what are the rules people follow. Uh, it's actually pretty good. Uh, it won the best process mining algorithm award uh, a couple of years ago. So, and then we did a lot of studies where we had an ethnographic view, where we visited case workers, uh, say what, what makes sense to digitalize, what does not make sense to digitalize, because there are a lot of rules and obligations that make sense to have in a tool, so you can help people remembering it, but the actual decision it does not make sense because it is even stated in the law that you're not allowed to put rule over uh, discre discretion, uh, 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 discretion. So, so you have to uh, have a case worker there. Okay, so this is the overview again in the pipeline uh, of tools. And uh, yeah, of course, some of it is open source. We developed an open source case manager client. Uh, these tools are free for academic use. So you can make an account and you can play with it. Uh, yeah. Thank you very much. We can thank the speaker. <laughs> Are there any questions in the room or on Ermit? In the room. 
Well, I, I have question, but uh, <laughs> I prefer to get yours first. Uh, okay. So uh, thank you, Thomas. Clearly, this is this is a long line of research, uh, and the 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 DSL you have developed is very impressive. Um, are you aware of the limitations it could have in terms of what what sort of what source of flow you can formalize with it, and what sort of flow you see that it's not very suitable for formalizing? It has been gradually extended when we found okay. these limitations. <laughs> uh, so right now we can we can do quite a lot. Uh, for instance, we added this time following an yeah. ISO standard for time. So now we can also express rules uh, including time. Um, so right now we are not meeting the limitations, okay. but I'm sure we will <laughs> at some point. And I think one big limitation right now is to have implemented this modularity uh, because otherwise it will not scale. Uh, yes. Because even though the graphs are pretty one-to-one, -one, uh, laws are complex, yes. so you don't want uh, the entire law in, in one graph. Uh, um, yeah. And of course, I noticed one uh, limitation in your talk, which is, I, I think, they are calculating with floating points, so I should ah. go back and... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, we have another question in the room. Um, so if you were wanting to, to add formal analysis, what would be the first analysis that you would be adding to your tool? So uh, we have done um, reachability. It's NP complete, but it can be done. And it, uh, we have uh, some, uh, there's some algorithms implemented actually. But uh, we would like uh, to have uh, an implementation of where that one graph is a refinement of another graph. Uh, and we have the theory for that. Um, and then uh, uh, also using it as a model checking tool, so you say, okay, is this graph uh, a property satisfied for that one? Um, what they have implemented right now is that you can specify graphs and then you can run them on a, a trace, and then it can tell you quickly, is it true or not? Um, but but these are the kind of, of analysis. Uh, then we have also formalized what, what does yeah, what does it mean for a change to a graph? to preserve the original language. So, so you're only restricting uh, what, what could be done. Um, so these kind of um, implementations would be nice to have. Thank you very much. We're running low on time uh, since we're going to switch to the next speaker, but we can thank Thomas once again. <laughs>